This is nothing new for y'all. I mean, look on TV, look on, listen to the radio, watch a movie, whatever. Um, it's everywhere in the world. Um, the picture being painted of, I'm the greatest. I don't know if y'all, do y'all get that? Y'all see people, Hollywood, whatever, music, whatever. It's all about self, it's all about building self, it's all about, I'm the best, I'm the greatest, self-glory, look at me, I'm important. Um, but look what that's done. If, if, if it just keeps going that way more and more, think about it. I, I know I do, I need a relationship. And if it's about self, 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 over and over again, that just breaks down relationships. And then where are relationships important? Friendships, marriage, family. I mean, I know that touches at least, I know it touches everybody in some way. Um, it touches me for sure. Uh, but obsession with self, this is nothing new. This has been going on forever. Uh, these past few weeks, you know, we've talked about this man called Jesus. And when he was walking on the earth, it was the same thing. Um, right before he was about to do his final work, he was eating a meal with his tight friends. And they were in an argument over what? Who was the greatest? All right, he's been talking with these guys. He's been... He's been in a relationship. He's loved these guys. They've loved each other. They've spent it. They've done life together. And they're still arguing over who's the greatest. Um, I'm going to read you from John 13. Um, and it's a picture of humility. That's kind of tonight's theme, talk-wise. Kind of the opposite of I'm um, the greatest. Before the Passover festival began, Jesus was keenly aware that his hour had come to depart from this world and to return to the Father. From beginning to end, Jesus' days were marked by his love for his people. Before Jesus and his disciples gathered for dinner, the adversary filled Judas Iscariot's heart with plans of deceit and betrayal. And Jesus, knowing that he had come from God, was going away to God, stood up from dinner and removed his outer garments. So I'm going to stop right there. So they're about to eat. And let me just tell you this. Back back in the day, you know, they wore sandals. And they walked a lot from place to place. And roads were dusty. And if they wasn't dusty, they were muddy. So what's that do to your feet? Right. <laughs> All right, I'm talking dirty. I mean, they're dirty. You can't help it. I know I've wore, I've tried to wear some Crocs in the chicken houses before, and it might be clean, but I come out, that's stupid. All right, but anyway. Um, feet are dirty there, all right? And so when you go into your house, I know when I've got muddy feet on and I start tracking through the house, that's going to upset Megan, all right? You just don't, I mean, it's just, you don't do it, all right? So there, this meal that I was talking about, they were eating together. They're going up into a house, and their feet are dirty. And so the standard procedure would be to wash your feet, right? You've got to clean your feet off. I know when I, when I was growing up, going to the lake, when I, uh, my grandmother, you know, she had a little foot bath right there outside on the steps. And we would, you know, coming back from the lake, our feet would get dirty. We'd just step in the bath and then walk in the house. But we had to clean up first, you know, and that's, that's, that's the point here. But look, that was done. Who did that? That was, that, that was a job clean. Washing feet was a job reserved for the lowliest of servants back in that day. Not a fun task, washing other people's dirty feet, right? Um, and so, you know, I picture that's why the disciples were arguing in the first place. Like, I'm the greatest, so therefore I'm not washing your feet. You know, who, who, who's, who's the lowest, I guess you'd say. I, I'm the greatest, so therefore I'm not washing feet. So I guess it was kind of a, you know, an argument over who was going to do the foot washing. Um, for this meal. Well, let's pick up there. Jesus stood up from dinner, removed his outer garments, he then wrapped himself in a towel, poured water in a basin, and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his towel. 
Simon Peter, um, a close friend of Jesus, he was like, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? All right, I can imagine Peter's super embarrassed now. I mean, think about a job you should have done, and then somebody that definitely shouldn't have been doing that job, probably. You know, they were above that job, came and did it. I would be embarrassed. All right. Peter was probably embarrassed, as were all the other disciples, as Jesus washed their feet. Peter, you don't realize what I'm doing, but you will understand later. Peter said, you will not wash my feet now or ever. Because he was like, no, Master, you, you're God. You are greater than me. You are, you're Jesus. And, and you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus said that if I don't wash you, you will have nothing to do with me. Peter was like, then wash me, but don't stop with my feet. Cleanse my hands and head as well. And Jesus said, listen, anyone who is bathed is clean all over except for the feet. But I tell you this, not all of you are clean. He knew the ones with plans of betraying him, which is why he said, not all of you are clean. And after washing the feet and picking up his garments, he would climb up the table again. Jesus said, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and truly that is who I am. So if your Lord and teacher washes your feet, then you should wash one another's feet. I am your example. Keep doing what I do. I tell you the truth. A servant is not greater than the master. Those who are sent, not greater than the one who sends them. If you know these things, and if you put them into practice, you will find happiness. So what did Jesus do? All right, first, you know, Cindy a lot several weeks ago talked about why we're here. That God created us; He created us to love us. That's why everything is around us and exists. And then later on, Eddie painted the picture with the fish. Like, okay, well, if God wants to love everybody, if He wants to love each one of us and have a relationship with us, how are we going to understand God if He's God and I'm a human? So God said, let me become human. Let me put skin on. I'm still God, but let me do this, move into your neighborhood. So I'm going to lay aside my rights as God for your sake, you know, dwell among you. And that was Jesus. All right? Super example of humility just right there. But then as Jesus, like we just read, walked this earth, and then knowing he's about to die in like a day, what does he spend his time doing? Being humble, being a servant, washing his disciples' feet, being that example. He's not saying, he wasn't telling us, he was telling the disciples, you can you wash feet and do, you know, do this exactly as what I'm doing, but it was more of a pattern. Live your life how I'm living mine as a humble servant. <clears throat> um, and then he says, if you do these things, that last verse that I read, if you do these things, you will be blessed. You will find happiness. Um, I want to mention this last thing, point out this one important part, I think, at least it hit me. Uh, you know, Peter was like, no, Lord, you're not washing my feet because you're Jesus. You, you shouldn't be doing that. And Jesus was like, unless you let me wash your feet, you will have no part with me. Um, you know, that didn't just point to that physical act of washing the feet itself. Jesus was saying that unless, Peter, unless you let me wash you, unless you let me wash you clean from your sin, you can have no part with me. You know, Alex taught the very first club. He had a t-shirt, he had a white t-shirt, and the sin was the dirt on the t-shirt. And we couldn't do it. I mean, we can wipe all we want, but it just would smear, and you're not going to get it clean. Only one person can clean, and that's Jesus. And all you have to do is ask Him to. So, um, any church is going to close with a song that I think illustrates this humility of Jesus. Um, I just want to point out the love in this humility. That humility. I mean, that was love, right?